Good morning. And welcome to Normandale Highlands United Methodist Church. In the midst of all your plans and in the midst of all your surprises, you've come now to worship, to praise God. On this day, it is so good that you're here. Welcome. Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine! There of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. going on again. Look at that. Hi. Oh, hi, everyone. I'm just hanging out with my friends here. I haven't seen some of you and I miss you. And so we're just hanging out with my other friends here and they decided to have another bubblegum blowing contest. And we've got Gail and Genevieve here. And we were a little concerned because they got in kind of an argument last time. They were going after each other because they were competing who had the biggest bubble. And so now we're trying it again. But I don't want it to end the same way. They were not getting along and they kind of were hitting each other. So what I noticed is something a little different here. There's some words on their, you know, their bubbles. And maybe that is because we were reading in the Bible. Here's my Bible. We were reading in there a really cool Bible verse that was gonna help us with this bubblegum blowing competition. And it is in Matthew 18 verses 15 to 20. And it was really helpful and it gave us guidance. So one of it, the very first verse said, if a fellow believer hurts you, go and tell them and work it out. So I'm like, oh, we should work it out. So Genevieve and Gail should work it out between the two of them. And then it said, if that doesn't work to work it out between the two people who are arguing, then you take another Christian person with you, one of your other Christian friends, maybe one or two, and then you talk together. Because when you're doing that, you're talking together in love. And you're just trying to say, hey, I don't think you two are getting along. I don't think you guys were talking very good to each other. Is there some other way we can do that? And I think that sounds great. And then in the next verses, it says, if that doesn't work, if they don't listen, 
Then what you should do is you should bring in other people from the church, other Christian people, more people to come in and have a conversation with them. So they should work it out. That was the big thing, was to work it out alone, work it out with a friend, or work it out with a whole group of people. And I was like, oh, hmm. Well, let's look at these bubbles. Oh my goodness, is this what we're supposed to do? Look it. He says to scream, Mom. If you start to argue, do you ever do that? Mom, Mom. Does Mom hear that a lot? Hmm, I don't think that was the first one. Let's see. Was the first one hit each other? Pew, pew. How does that turn out? When you're with your siblings or your cousins and you start hitting each other, how does that work out? And we could ask Genevieve and Gail how that worked out for them. They probably weren't talking very much after that, huh? Well, let's see. <gasps> Do you see the bubble? The first one? Do you see the work it out bubble? Who's got it? Who's got the work it out bubble? It's a small one. It's a small one. It's not scream mom. <gasps> Jesus has it. Jesus, your bubble says, Work it out, number one. So you work it out between you. And then if it doesn't work, what's the second thing we should do? Hmm. Go get your friends to beat them up. Does that sound like a good idea? Should we go get other people to beat them up? I don't think Gen Genevieve and Gail want to beat each other up. They're just not happy with each other and calling each other names. Hmm. Hit each other? No, I don't think that's number two. Let's see. Do you see it? It's number two. It's the medium bubble. This is kind of a medium bubble, but that says hit each other. Where's the other medium bubble? Do you see a medium bubble? Does Auli have the medium bubble? It says bring a friend to help. That's what that Auli says. Bring a friend to help. So that's number two. Bring a friend to help. Work it out. And then the third one, we're looking for the biggest bubble. What's the biggest bubble? Do you see the biggest bubble? This is, go get your friends to beat them up. No? Is it this one? The panda? Do you have a panda? You've got the biggest bubble. I think you're going to win. Bring more church friends to help remind the person of God's forgiving love. So it says bring more church friends together to help them think about what they're doing and realizing that it is okay to say that you did something wrong and ask for forgiveness and God will forgive you. So those are the three. So hit each other. No, that's not one of them. So we're going to take your bubble away from you. And the Grinch, I expected the Grinch to have this. Go get your friends to beat them up. Sorry, Grinch. We're going to pop your bubble. Pop. And scream, Mom. Well, that's really easy. Um, maybe you could ask your mom to help you. And she could be that third person or your dad or your grandparents to come in and help you work it out because sometimes it's hard to work things out. Hmm. So maybe we won't scream at mom, but maybe we'll ask them for help. Huh. And then we've got the three left. One, work it out. Two, bring a friend. Three, bring more friends. So will you pray together with me? Repeat after me. Dear God, you are with us when things are good and when things are not so good. Help us to remember you are with us and will help us work it out. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Will you pray with me? Gracious and wonderful God, you do hear us whenever we pray. You hear us when we call out our prayers of thanks and surprise. You hear us, Lord God, when, when we call out of our anguish and even, even anger and sorrow. Dear God, you hear us when we pray our prayers of joy. Hear us now. In each of our hearts, however we are, we lift these prayers to you. We pray, dear God, for for all the people who have been stricken by the hurricanes, the people of Louisiana and Texas as they look to rebuild, and we hear us as we pray for the people of California, and all the firefighters, dear God, and first responders, all who who work so hard 
and are so tired. We ask for safety. And dear God, through this coming week, all the kids coming together, all the teachers coming together, either online or in person or a combination, please, dear God, bless families, and teachers and administrators, and give them a good, good week. For all the universities and colleges and, and preschools, dear God, help them to, to come together in, in the best ways. Lord God, hear us as we pray for, for doctors, nurses, and technicians. And dear God, for as we think about each one, we think about we think about now the time where all who are coming into harm's way because of COVID-19. But Lord God, we are mindful that they put themselves at risk throughout all their careers through all the bugs and viruses and biohazards, and we thank you for their willingness to serve, and we ask for your protection on them. Hear us as we pray for researchers and for this nation. Bless us, dear God, for all who, for all who do not feel respected. We ask for your care, for our struggles around race and the conversations. We ask for your guiding hand. Help us, Lord God. And for the unrest in the cities, particularly Portland and Seattle and Minneapolis and, and Chicago, we ask for, for your will be done beyond our best plans and beyond our our wildest dreams, dear God, you are able and you are willing and you do far more than we can dream or imagine. Do just that, dear God. And we ask that you don't just do that for us, but, but that you guide us, each of us, in our hearts, in our minds, in our actions, to do your will. Hear us as we pray for Joyce Aspinwall, for Judy Clark, we pray for Karen Dragon and Pat Gaylord, for Janet Hipple and Larry Kingry. We pray for Don Korb and Kay Lentz, for Rita McKenzie and Katie Muehlbach. We pray for Dave Nelson and Twyla Selmer. We pray for Gretchen Anderson. And dear God, we pray for, for all who struggle for health, all who continue through chemotherapy, dear God, and, and for all who struggle for health in all their ways. Hear us as we pray for all who grieve, especially whose grief is new and sharp, for the Kiebers family, for the Lewis family, dear God, for, for the Chorzempa family and McKenzie family, and for, dear God, we look for ways to bring grace to one another. Help us to do that. And hear us as we pray for, for babies yet to be born and their moms, especially, Lord God, for babies with complications. Please bring them to, to a healthy delivery, the moms and the babies, and for for families who struggle with one another, for moms and dads and, and kids, whether they're teenagers or young adults, we ask for your guiding hand and your grace and your will. And hear us, Lord God, as we pray in the quiet. Wonderful God, we lift these prayers to you through our hope, 
your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, and who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We have, you and I, among all the trials, among all the difficulties, among all the celebrations, and all the gifts in our lives, we have so much to be thankful for, and we thank God. So in this time, when you hear the music of the offertory, I invite you to search in your heart and to give thanks to God and to listen. Yes, I, I thank you for the ways that you offer to God through the church, through some of you drop off an offering, some of you mail it in, some of you use the electronic means. As we continue to worship God, let's do that, giving thanks to God with our tithes and our offerings. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. And take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. And my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters. Wherever you would call me, take me deeper than my feet could ever want. My faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would come. 
keep my eyes above the waves. My soul will rest in your embrace, and I am yours, and you are mine. Our first scripture lesson comes from Romans chapter 13, verses 8 through 14. Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, or whatever other command there may be, are summed up in this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. And do this, understanding the present time. The hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber, because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearer over, nearly over, the day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us behave decently as in the daytime, not in carousing or drunkenness, not in sexual immorality or debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. Rather, clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. Please stand for the reading of the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 18, verses 15 through 20. If your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault, just between the two of you. If they listen to you, you have won them over. But if they will not listen, take one or two others along, so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If they still refuse to listen, tell them to the church. And if they refuse to listen even to the church, treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by the Father in heaven. For where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. There's this time in our lives when I was in seminary. Joan and I lived in North Carolina. And at that time we had we had a baby boy, and, and Joan was pregnant. And she was working, and I was working, and uh, my brothers gave me a gift. They gave me an airplane ticket to go see my dad again. My dad at the time had lung cancer. And so, in the middle of classes and in the middle of Joan and I taking care of our, our baby boy and her pregnant, I, I had this, this precious gift of getting to see my dad again in an unplanned time. And the whole time we visited, and then in the, the house I grew up in, and my dad had the, the oxygen tube and the concentrator was in the other room, way going. You've heard those concentrators before. Maybe you have one. And and my dad asked me asked me a question. Oh, he asked a, a few of them. 
some about me growing up and decisions I made and things he was curious about and and we had talks and and sometimes we ran out of things to say and and we had this this precious gift of time together of living room time together on this day Labor Day weekend, 2020. I mean, it, all the things we have to say about 2020 are, well, how many cliches can we have? This year's been called Jumanji, and, and then we look up what Jumanji is and, and, and an explanation and try to have standing, and, and we see that goofy game where a roll of the dice takes you on an adventure that you never wanted. Oh, this year, 2020. When New Year's rang, some assumptions, some assumptions we had about this fall, about September, October, November of, of this year, some assumptions, some things we could count on so that we did not even plan for them. They were kind of the uh, foundational framework. Every year, every year, family with, with our three boys, there's a season where the leaves turn and they fall. And one or two or three of our boys are at football practice. And on Friday nights, sometimes Thursday afternoons or Tuesday afternoons, we're at football games and I'm taking pictures. Those are things that, that I didn't even write on the calendar because I expected them. There are, oh, I don't have to go over all the dance recitals set aside, all the uh, first day of school events that are different. We know these things. And we know that in all of this, we have riots. We have, well, it's called social unrest, but that sounds like such a, a gentle term. What's happening in the cities and in suburbs and we have this, we have this thing that, that through over 200 years has been such a celebration. And, and even as this has been such a celebration, well, there's been turmoils through these elections and election cycles and hard things said. Oh, the things they said about Andrew Jackson. Oh, my. And Ben Franklin, who, who I know he didn't run for office, but he had... He had a whole newspaper that dedicated their, all their printings to just tearing him down. And they did as best they could. Well, these things have happened. And at the same time, we have known and we have been thankful for this ability to either, to either choose to stay the course or to change and either way, it would be a peaceful transition. And now the discourse, oh, there's much going on. And our passage today talks about time is short. And the passage we have today was written not in 2020, but as every passage of the Bible has been written, it was written for 2020. The time is short. The, the day is here. Let's so act as people of the day. It's, and it says, and it reads, to owe nothing to anyone else except to owe nothing to anyone else except 
the thing that is most valuable, love. And Jesus, true light of true light, true God of true God eternal, the one who said himself that he is the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus calls us that if you have a, a grievance against a brother, go. If you have a grievance against a sister, go and work it out as best you can. See, Jesus even gives us this, this gift of, of trying. It's not all your responsibility. Responsibility to, to give it a try and to try and to work it out. But there, and there comes a point or we look at the time and, and we notice that the day is short, that so much of eternity is ever present before us. This one day, my dad asked me, we were in the living room, that machine was going. This annoying sound, but this annoying sound was a sound. This machine cleaning up the oxygen, concentrating it for him. This, this tube on his nose gave him itches and it bothered him, but it filled his lungs with the good stuff. The commandments do not murder. Do not, do not steal. Do not lie. Do, do not covet. Do not want what others have. They're all summed up in this, says our passage today. They're all summed up, even Jesus says in another passage. Love your neighbor as yourself. My dad asked me, could you do me a favor? as he's struggling for his breath, whose breathing had grown so shallow, did not covet anyone else's breathing, did not, was not jealous over anyone else's breathing, but he wanted one of his kids. He wanted to enjoy what is seeing his kids enjoy the breath of life. Oh, nothing to each other. In 2020, when we see so vividly the preciousness of our days, when we see so vividly how much our relationships with one another are worth, when we see so clearly that we are in each moment present before eternity, when we are in each moment present before God, let us owe nothing but what God so freely gives us, love. And God so loved you that God sent his son that whosoever believes in him will not perish, will not be harmed, but will have eternal life. And so may you be blessed to hold and to owe and to give and to receive this gift of God, which sums up all the commands. Do not harm. Do not lie, do not covet, do not commit adultery. Love your neighbor. Love God with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your soul, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Oh, nothing but that. May you be blessed to share in the true treasure among all the plans you have to set aside, among all the plans that are changing in your life, may you be blessed to go easy on your neighbor. May you be blessed 
to go light on the ones around you. May you be blessed to go gracious on yourself and to dwell richly in the things that last. May you be blessed to owe nothing but love. Amen. Grace alone, please stand. you. May God bless you with surprises of God's grace because as much as we can dream, as much as we can hope for, God blesses with more because God can and does more than we can ever hope or dream. May you be dreaming big and may you be blessed. Amen.